Imagine this, six nations separated by vast deserts and political borders, being linked through one seamless rail network that cuts through thousands of kilometers of some of the world's most challenging landscapes. This is the bold vision behind the Gulf Railway Mega Project, one of the most ambitious infrastructure endeavors in modern history. A project of this scale has never been attempted in the Gulf before, a region where oil pipelines have long defined the flow of commerce. But now, a web of steel rails aims to carry not just goods and people, but the hopes of a new era of unity and prosperity. Connecting Saudi Arabia, the UAE, Oman, Kuwait, Qatar, and Bahrain, this single railway line will be powerful enough to reshape the entire region, transforming economies and rewriting the future of trade and travel. Yet, as this colossal project meets the realities of geopolitics, economics, and engineering, the question remains, can this grand vision become a reality? Today, let's delve into the $250 billion Gulf Railway Mega Project, uncovering its scope, current progress, and the key challenges it faces. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. The idea of a railway connecting all Gulf Cooperation Council nations first emerged in the early 2000s, reflecting the growing realization among Gulf leaders that enhanced physical connectivity was essential to future economic growth and integration. In 2009, this vision was formalized through an agreement among the GCC member states, setting the stage for the creation of an integrated railway network capable of transforming regional logistics and travel. The project was conceived not merely as a transport solution, but as a strategic initiative to facilitate deeper economic ties among the member nations, diversify the economies beyond oil, and create new opportunities for trade, tourism, and labor mobility. The Gulf Railway is designed as a dual-purpose rail system, capable of transporting both passengers and freight efficiently. It will connect major industrial hubs, commercial centers, and ports, while also providing fast, reliable intercity transport for the region's residents and visitors. The goal is to establish a network that runs parallel to the existing road systems, but offers superior speed, capacity, and environmental benefits. It is envisioned to complement the region's expanding airports and seaports, thereby creating a multimodal transport ecosystem that will serve as the backbone of future Gulf trade and mobility. Beyond transport, the railway is increasingly viewed as a strategic tool to deepen regional integration, especially as GCC countries face growing economic competition and shifting alliances in the Middle East. The proposed Gulf Railway network will span approximately 2,177 kilometers, stretching from the northern tip of Kuwait to Oman's southeastern coast. The planned route begins in Kuwait City, covering around 111 kilometers, and extends south to Dammam in Saudi Arabia, which will have the longest segment at approximately 663 kilometers. From there, it connects to Bahrain through the proposed King Hamad Causeway adding about 64 kilometers of railway. The line then moves into Qatar, with roughly 283 kilometers reaching the capital Doha, before continuing through the United Arab Emirates, which will host about 684 kilometers, linking major hubs such as Abu Dhabi, Dubai, and Alain. The final stretch enters Oman, covering approximately 306 kilometers, connecting to musket and critical industrial zones like Sohar. The network is designed to handle high-speed passenger trains capable of traveling up to 220 kilometers per hour, with some segments, like the Abu Dhabi-Dubai corridor, expected to reach speeds of 350 kilometers per hour, cutting travel time between the two cities to just 30 minutes. Freight trains will operate at speeds of 80 to 120 kilometers per hour, making the railway a competitive alternative to both road and air transport. Projected to transport 8 million passengers and 95 million tons of cargo annually. By 2045, the network aims to revolutionize regional logistics and connectivity by reducing travel times and freight costs. 
The Gulf Railway is poised to deliver significant economic benefits for the region. Chief among them is the enhancement of intra-GCC trade, as the railway will drastically reduce transportation costs for moving raw materials, finished goods, and industrial components. The GCC nations, which are among the world's largest exporters of oil and petrochemicals, rely heavily on efficient logistics to maintain their competitive position in global markets. By facilitating cheaper and faster freight transport, the railway will boost trade volumes, stimulate industrial growth, and support the expansion of non-oil sectors like manufacturing, construction, and tourism. Beyond trade, the railway promises to improve human connectivity by providing a modern and efficient mode of travel for residents, business travelers, and tourists. Additionally, the railway will generate significant employment opportunities, both during the construction phase and once operational. In the UAE alone, the high-speed railway is expected to contribute approximately $40 billion to the country's economy over the next 50 years reflecting its long-term role as a national economic driver. Despite its ambitious vision and promising benefits, the Gulf Railway project has encountered several critical challenges that have delayed its implementation. A primary issue is coordination among the six GCC member states. Since each country is responsible for building the segment of the railway that lies within its borders, progress has been uneven reflecting differing national priorities, budgetary constraints, and political considerations. While some countries like the UAE and Saudi Arabia have made substantial progress, others, including Kuwait, Bahrain, and Qatar, have experienced significant delays. Technical and regulatory alignment has been another major obstacle. Given that the railway crosses multiple international borders, issues such as track gauge standardization, customs, immigration procedures, and rail safety regulations require detailed negotiation and agreement among all stakeholders. These complex technical and regulatory hurdles have slowed progress. However, according to recent GCC meetings, member states are now working on a joint framework to resolve customs and regulatory issues to enable smoother cross-border operations. Financing the $250 billion megaproject also poses a formidable challenge. Although the Gulf states are wealthy, the sheer scale of the investment, compounded by the impact of fluctuating oil prices and other economic pressures, has made it difficult to allocate sufficient funds. Public sector investment alone is unlikely to sustain the project, and there is a growing consensus that private sector participation and public-private partnerships will be necessary to bring the project to completion. However, attracting private investment requires clear regulatory frameworks and assurances of commercial viability, which are still under development in many participating nations. Despite these challenges, several GCC nations have made notable progress on their portions of the railway. The UAE, in particular, has taken the lead in regional rail development. Its flagship Etihad Rail Project has completed Phase 1, connecting key industrial areas such as Al Ruways to the western region. Phase 2, which extends the line to the Saudi border and further into Dubai and Sharjah, is well underway and forms a critical part of the overall Gulf Railway network. Freight operations have already begun, and passenger services are expected to follow soon. Saudi Arabia has also advanced its domestic rail infrastructure, including the North-South Railway, and the Haramain High Speed Rail, which connects Mecca and Medina. These lines not only serve internal transportation needs, but are designed to integrate into the broader GCC railway system. As the largest country in the GCC, Saudi Arabia will serve as a central hub, linking east to west and north to south within the network. Meanwhile, Oman has recently signed key agreements to launch the construction of its segment of the railway focusing initially on connecting the UAE border to Sohar, a vital industrial and port city. However, Bahrain, Kuwait, and Qatar remain behind in implementation. Bahrain's participation hinges on the completion of the King Hamad Causeway, a critical but delayed link to Saudi Arabia. Qatar, having paused its plans during the 2017 Gulf diplomatic crisis, 
is now slowly re-engaging with the project following the resolution of the dispute. However, according to the GCC Secretariat General, all six member states have reaffirmed their commitment to the railway project during a meeting held in November 2024, and discussions are underway to finalize a coordinated timeline for cross-border connections and construction phases. The Gulf Railway Mega Project stands as one of the most visionary infrastructure undertakings in the Middle East. While significant challenges remain, the progress in key countries like the UAE and Saudi Arabia highlights the immense potential of this project to reshape regional trade, transport, and integration. If completed, the Gulf Railway will not only improve logistics and mobility, but also symbolize the collective ambition of the GCC nations to forge a shared, prosperous, and sustainable future. In the long term, the Gulf Railway has the potential to serve as a model for regional integration in other parts of the world. By connecting six nations through a shared infrastructure platform, the railway will promote regional stability, economic growth, and environmental responsibility. What do you think? Will the Gulf Railway truly transform the Middle East, or will it remain just a vision? Leave a reply in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.